Okay, so we are in the middle of talking about uh, uh, controlling the behavior of um, key uh, key uh, performance indicators uh, of the system, uh, which are um, expressed as uh, random variables, and we are um, taking an approach to the control of the random variables that has to do with non-parametric uh, um, uh, non statistics. So we don't assume that we know the distribution. We talked about what, what do we mean exactly by a random variable, and we talked about the distribution function, and we talked about uh, empirical distribution. So at this point, um, we want, I want to introduce another thing that will, will, will help us on, our, on this journey. Uh, and that's um, uh, the, the, the analysis of the distribution function in a certain way. So let, let's have a look at this. Um, so um, if you if you remember the distribution function, we said that the distribution function of a random variable at the point x is the probability that the random variable will assume a value that is less than x. Okay, so that that's that was the definition of the distribution function. Um, and we we had some examples with the dice. So, uh, uh, for instance, we ask ourselves, what's the probability that we get a value that is less than three in, in throwing a dice? So, so what was that probability? Was it less than or equal to three or less than three? Less than or equal to three. So that'd be half. Right. So so we all understand what the concept of the of the distribution function is now. But now the the next thing we want to understand is um in something interesting. Which which has to do with connecting back. So in general, in general, um, uh, one of the ways, one of the patterns of uh, non-parametric statistics is to somehow connect back to parametric statistics, because parametric st the statistics is uh, easier sometimes to analyze, and um, this is what we're going to do today. So if you look here at the book, um, I want to make a connection with the, something called Bernoulli distribution. So I want to connect, to make a connection between the Bernoulli distribution and the, the distribution function of any random So that I will end up doing kind of estimation on Bernoulli distribution, which is well known, you know, well known exercise in order to do, in order to estimate the the distribution function of any distribution, any random value. So that that's the exercise. So first, let's see the connection. So um, one way, you know, we 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 consider the sample. And um, so we have the um, sample of n endpoints that we randomly chose independently. And we ask ourselves, what's the probability um, of one of the points in the sample to be less than x, which is the distribution function, uh, which we just mentioned. One way to think about it 
is what's the probability of um, the indicator function of xi being less than or equal to x being true. Okay? So, so it's as if you have, you have two choices. Either xi is less than x or xi is bigger than x. And um, uh, we are asking ourselves what's the probability of that happen, happen uh, either that it's less than x or bigger than x. So there's two options, and each one of them has a probability. What's the probability that xi is less than x? That's the distribution function at x. So you can think about whether or not xi is less than x or bigger than x as uh, a, a random variable that has only two values, either it's less than or greater than x. And uh, it, it's less than x with probability uh, represented by the distribution function at x. That type of a random variable is called the Bernoulli random variable. So, so you can think about um, you can think about the the probability um, um, of the the point in the sample being less than x. You can think about it as a Bernoulli random variable with parameter f of x. That's what you see here. So basically, there's only two alternatives, either xi is less than x or bigger than x, and the probability of it being less than x is f of x. So, so you can, yeah, so it's a Bernoulli, a Bernoulli uh, random variable that has probability uh, f of x of being less than x. <laughs> okay, does that make sense up to now? Yes, much better with your words than just reading it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so once you think about it in that way, then um, in order to estimate the the, the distribution function at x, you need you need to this to estimate a run a Bernoulli random variable. Um, with the parameter uh, f of x. And now I'm going to, to, to kind of take a detour and tell you a bit about um, Bernoulli variables so we know how to calculate their average and standard, standard deviation. That's the two things we'll need in order to go back to our exercise with the uh, estimation of the a, any distribution okay so um, yeah so so basically now you can forget about the distribution function for for minutes actually for the rest of the you know, the duration of this discussion and focus on a random variable, a Bernoulli random variable that has two possible values. Okay, so the random variable now can um, take one of two possible values. Either, either it gets a value one or a value zero. So it, okay. On any event, it can have either a value one or a value zero. That's our variable. And now we could assume that the that we know the probability. Actually, later on we'll be estimating it. But um, we say that maybe the probability of taking a, a one is p, and the probability of taking zero is minus one minus p. Okay, so it's like throwing uh, a dice that is not fair. You know, it has probability 
p of getting a one and probability one minus p of getting a zero. Now, the first thing we are interested in is what's, um, so, so, so this is, this is a Bernoulli, this is a Bernoulli, pro, a, a random variable with, with parameter P. Later on, in order to do the estimation for the general distribution, we'll have to do exactly that. But P will be substituted with uh, F of X. Okay, but for now we can forget about F of X. We just want to understand what's the two, two, two things that we want to understand is what's the average and what is the variance of a Bernoulli distribution of parameter P. Okay, so in general, the average, this is a discrete distribution. So it has two, you know, it has a two number, two possible values. It's not an infinite distribution that has infinite number of possible values. So the, the average of the, the average of, of the, um, of the of the random variable is simply the sum of the possible values that the random variable can take times the probabilities that to to get that value. So in our case, what are the two values that the random variable can take? Zero or one. Right. So th this is the xi here. And what are the probabilities that it can take? For one, what is the probability? P? Yes. <laughs> Very good, Debbie. <laughs> so for zero, what's the probability? <laughs> one, one minus P. <laughs> Right, and one minus p times zero. How much is that? Zero. Yeah. So, so overall, this this is p. Okay. This that's the average. Like if p is a half, then the average is going to be a half, which is which makes sense, right? Okay. Very good up to now. Yeah. Great. So the other thing, the other thing we, so th that's the first thing we want to understand. So <coughs> estimating a Bernoulli variable, estimating the average is simple. You just <coughs> get a uh, <coughs> hundred samples. Let's see what's the percentage of having a one. And then you have your estimate, right? The bigger, the better. The bigger the sample. So that's one thing we always want to know the average, right? But we also want to know the standard deviation because that will tell us how likely is the random, how likely the, is it that the random variable will be far away from the average. And that helps us, uh, you know, get those uh, control control limits that we're looking at. But the second thing that we want to understand is what's the variance of uh, the Bernoulli variable. Okay. Now the variance is just, what is the average, hmm, the average um, distance of the random variable from its average. Let, let's call the average here, um, call this average. So what, what's, so what's the average of the random variable being far away from 
uh, to a certain, you know, certain extent. Okay, that will tell us how, on the average, how much do we expect the random variable to be far away from the average. Okay, and uh, and later we'll see how it also tells us uh, something about um, how likely is the probability mass. Uh, most of the probability mass being next to the uh, average, which is exactly what we want, we want to control uh, the chance of the behavior of the system being far away from the average. Okay, does, does that make sense up to now? So far, so good. Great. So. Again, average for a discrete thing is just the sum of the value times the probability, right? So it's uh, possible values. Of times the probability. Okay, so. Um, so we have, basically we have two possible values, right? One is one and the other is zero, okay? So the, the first va possible value is one minus the, the average times the probability. What's the probability of, um, of getting a one? P. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And then um, uh, I need to put here. And then the the again the other value is zero times one minus p, right? So that's our variance. Make sense? Yeah, so it basically becomes one minus P squared minus P because the other stuff is all zero. No? Oh, um, no, 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 I'm sorry. I was, I was multiplying times zero, not minus. Okay. Yeah, yeah, here, here it becomes uh, positive, right? Positive, yeah. Okay, so got it. One minus P outside of the parentheses. Right. So in uh, inside the parentheses, you have uh, one minus p times p um, minus p square. Right. Let's see. I took one minus p outside of the parentheses. I have here one minus p times p. And here I have, oh, this is plus, right? Because uh, zero minus p is uh, to the a square of zero minus p is p to the square of two, okay? So that, that this cancels. And you have uh, one minus p um, times p. Okay. So, so this is the variance. So we're going to use these two calculations. Uh, we're going to assume next time that we know the average and the variance. And we're going to use it in order to estimate, empirically estimate uh, the distribution, the distribution at a point X. Make sense? Yeah. 
Yeah. So mm -hmm. I, I guess I'm trying to figure out how, how this plays into the machine learning. Can we right. so, talk a little bit about that? Yeah, tying it back. So basically, um, in, here we, we, we want to estimate the distribution function, right? Yeah. Now the distribution function represents, will represent some uh, random distribution function of some random variable, like the number of times we are routing um, a service call in, in, in a chatbot. So now yo, we are routing it to, to an agent, a human agent. Okay. So that would be the random variable and we'll have any uh, measures of, um, of, um, of that random variable about the routing. And we'll have um, we'll, we'll we'll have the empirical distribution here, and we would like to estimate what's the chance, say, of the routing being bigger than twenty percent. So we'll end up wanting to estimate what the chance of the distribution function being less than twenty percent or bigger than twenty percent. So we'll end up estimating it using a Bernoulli variable you see <laughs> that makes that helps sense. yeah that helps that helps because sometimes when we get into the math it just goes so deep that i just want to bring us back out to understand how it applies to the problem we're trying to solve great great so that that's that's how you close the circle and you'll see it as we go through things you'll see it in details this is this is just a look ahead kind of uh, okay Yep, thank you. Welcome. Any any other questions or comments at this point? Okay, so thank you very much for joining and we'll continue next time. Yeah.